तो डियर फ्रेंड्स वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट इकोलॉजिकल सक्सेशन तो इकोलॉजिकल सक्सेशन इज अ प्रोसेस थ्रू विच इको सिस्टम टेंस टू चेंज ओवर अ पीरियड ऑफ टाइम सक्सेशन कैन बी रिलेटेड टू सीजनल एनवायरमेंटल चेंजेस विच क्रिएट चेंजेस इन द कम्युनिटी ऑफ प्लांट्स एंड एनिमल्स लिविंग इन द इको सिस्टम अदर सक्सेशनल इवेंट्स में टेक मच लॉन्गर पीरियड्स ऑफ टाइम एक्सटेंडिंग टू सेवरल डिकेट्स द सक्सेसिव स्टेजेस आर रिलेटेड टू विच रिलेटेड टू द वे इन विच एनर्जी फ्लो थ्रू द बायोलॉजिकल सिस्टम वी हैव डिस्कस्ड इन प्रीवियस लेक्चर्स दैट विद इन एन इको सिस्टम देर आर सेवरल डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ एनर्जी फ्लो food chain food web so this all uh, components are interrelated with each other depending on that there is change a continuous change in the ecosystem whereas some changes can be observed very easily in a short span of time on the other hand few changes occur in a very very long period of time say like in several decades that cannot be observed easily so uh, a food chain shows how each living thing gets its food some animals eat plant and some animals eat other animals a food chain always starts with plant life and end with an animal plants are called producers because they are able to use light energy from the sun to produce their food animals cannot make their own food so they must eat plants and other animals and these animals are called as consumers animals and people who eat both are called omnivores then there are decomposers that is bacteria and fungi which feed on decaying materials and they are the very important part of ecosystem so this is the image of food chain and a food web a food web and a food chain are interconnected as there cannot be too many links in a single food chain because the animals at the end of the chain would not get enough food to stay alive however most animals are part of more than one food chain and eat more than one kind of food in order to meet their food and energy requirements these interconnected food chains form a food web this interdependence of the populations within a food chain helps to maintain the balance of plant and animal population within a community next is ecological pyramids in an ecosystem green plants the producers utilize energy directly from sunlight and convert it into matter a large number of these organisms from the most basic or first tropic level of the food pyramid the herbivorous animals that eat plants are at the second tropic level and are called primary consumers the predators that feed on them 
form the third trophic level and are known as secondary consumers. Only a few animals form the third trophic level, consisting of carnivores and the effect of the food pyramid. This is how energy is used by living creatures and flows through the ecosystem from its base to the apex. So here are two images. First one is of terrestrial food pyramid and second is of aquatic food pyramid. So uh, we can see how it differs from each other. In aquatic food pyramid, there are components of water. Whereas in terrestrial food pyramid, there are components only for only on the land base of the land based ecosystem. So, on the top of terrestrial ecosystem, terrestrial food pyramid, on the apex is man, then sheep, and the last one is water. Whereas in case of aquatic food pyramid on the apex is man, then fish, microscopic primary producer, and then primary producer. So there is we can see from this image we can understand that there is a huge difference between different food pyramid or land based food pyramid and aquatic food pyramid there can be some other components also depending on the need depending on the requirement but these two images are uh, very simple and clear image for better understanding of terrestrial food pyramid and aquatic food so next there are different type of ecosystem terrestrial ecosystem aquatic ecosystem different examples of terrestrial ecosystem can be a forest a grassland semi arid area desert mountains island whereas aquatic ecosystem can be a pond lake wetland, a river, delta, and marine water source. The image on the screen clearly picturized the components of a forest ecosystem. Forests are formed by a community of plants, which is predominantly structurally defined by its tree, shrubs, climbers and ground cover. The landscape that make up various types of forests look very different from each other. Thus, each forest type forms a habit, habitat for a specific community of animals that are adopted to live in that situation. So we see that each different type of forest, they comprise of different components, different species, different animals, different plants, different vegetation. And each type of different components are 
adoptive to its local environment so next is the different types of forest the forest type depends upon the abiotic factors such as climate and soil characteristics of a region furthermore in indian scenario the forest can be divided into two different forms that is coniferous forest and broadleaf forest they can also be classified according to the nature of their tree species that is evergreen deciduous xerophytic or thorn trees and mangrove at the end they can also be classified according to the most abundant species of trees such as sal or peat forest coniferous forest coniferous forest grow in the himalayan mountain region where the temperatures are very low the forest have tall spreadly trees with needle like leaves and downward sloping branches they have cones instead of seeds and are called as gymnosperms so we can see from the image the variety of trees which are available in himalayan mountain region forests of the himalayan mountain region these species of tree are designed and found suitable for this environment as it is written or discussed that these tall stately trees have needle like leaves and downward sloping branches this is highly suitable for the weather or the climate which very oftenly very commonly faces the snowfall so due to pokey structure cone like structure and downward sloping branches none of the branch or leaves get damaged by the weight of snow it is advantage advantage advantageous to survive that situation so depending on the climatic scenario depending on geographical features depending on several other parameters we see that this type of tree or this species of tree is well adopted to local environment and local nature in this area most of the time the temperature is minimum starting from minus 2 few degrees celsius 
winter season is long compared to the dry summer season. There are very less sunny days in this type of area. So depending on the climatic parameters, this species has adopted and survived in such kind of area. If we take example of broad leaved forest, that type of forest or vegetation couldn't survive in this situation. The climate, especially the snowfall, would not allow broad leaved plant to survive. The structure of the branches, the design of the leaves are not suitable to survive in this type of environment. So, yes, next is broadleaf forest. Broadleaf forest have several types, such as evergreen forest, deciduous forest, thorn forest, and at the last is mangrove forest. So, within the broadleaf forest, also there are several different types of forests. And these different types of forests are located in different geographical areas. These different types of forests provide shelter, residence for different types of animals, birds, insects, etc. Additionally, from these different types of forests, different varieties of produce is generated. So first one is evergreen forest. So from the image itself, we can see this is an image of a dense forest having much amount or, or a much denser vegetation. Large trees, small grass, other plants, creepers, this all can be seen in this image. So these type of forests are found in high rainfall areas of the Western Ghats, Northeastern India and the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. It looks green throughout the year. The trees overlap with each other to form a continuous canopy. The forest is rich in orchard and ponds. The barks of the trees are covered in moss. The forest around allows in animals life and is most rich in insect life. If we try to under, understand the situation of evergreen forest, we'll find that this type of forest is highly suitable for most of the components of any ecosystem. Big animals, small animals, herbivorous animals, carnivorous animals, variety of birds and variety of dirtivorous can be, can reside in this environment, can survive in this environment. Because when there are large number of vegetation, the ground will be almost covered with organic waste like we leaves, branches, etc. And when organic waste is on the ground, means decaying decaying process is ongoing. That is a very suitable environment for the tree to be present there. So, uh, this type of forest provides shelter for several different species of animals as well as insects and it is a high rainfall area so a number of tree species 
or vegetation species will also be seen. So next is deciduous forest. So deciduous forests are found in regions with a moderate amount of seasonal rainfall that lasts for only a few months. Most of the forests in which teak trees grow are of this type. The deciduous trees shed their leaves during the winter and hot summer months. In March or April, they regain their fresh leaves just before the monsoon. When they grow vigorously, in response to the rain. Therefore, there are periods of leaf fall and canopy regrowth. Generally, the forest, this type of forest, has a thick undergrowth as light can penetrate easily onto the forest floor. So from the images we can see and understand that how there is canopy formation and how is the ground surface in this type of deciduous forest. Whereas in case of evergreen forest we have seen that canopy cover was of different type and the entire ground surface is covered with vegetation as well as several organic waste which has been generated by the trees. So next is thorn forest. So thorn forests are found in the semi-arid regions of India. The trees which are partially distributed are surrounded by open grassy areas. The thorny plate plants are called xerophytic species and are available to conserve and are able to conserve water. Some of these trees have small leaves while other species have thick waxy leaves to reduce water loss during transpiration process. Thorn forest Trees have long or fibrous roots to reach water at great depths. Many of these plants have thorns which reduce water loss and protect them from herbivorous animals. So next is mangrove forest. You can see from the image, this type of images we can, we might have seen in several geographic discovery programs. Several programs I have seen, which has been documented on a similar type of area. So mangrove forest grow along the coast, especially in the river deltas. These plants are available to grow in a mix of saline and fresh water. They grow luxuriantly in muddy areas covered with silt that the river have brought it down from up the stream. The mangrove trees have breathing roots that emerge from the mud banks. So, 
as i said in the beginning there are different forest produce forest producers from different type of forest here few examples are being given that is the direct use of forest produce so first is fruit like mango jamun amla and several other fruit produce we consume it or it is generated in forest area second is root which is received from forest area medicine fuelwood which consists of many species of trees and shrubs small timbers for building huts and houses wood and palm implements bamboo and cane for baskets grass for grazing and stall feeding of livestock so we can see that different forest produces are there which is consumed directly which is utilized directly by the human beings similarly there are indirect uses of forest products what are those forest products which are utilized or which can be classified under indirect uses of forest products so it is first one is building material for construction and furniture for the urban sector medicinal products collected and processed into drugs gums and resins processed into a variety of products raw materials for industrial products and chemical last one is paper from bamboo and soft wood so we can see that several other products are also available or products are there which are produced from the forest area so before discussing the quiz can we spare few minutes to identify near your surrounding near your house that what are the different things you are using or your family members are using which is from the forest area so take at least 1 minute and then i think it so if we try to analyze we will find several furniture wooden furniture wooden doors windows various food items like uh, fruits so uh, we can see that even we are also dependent for several things which is being produced by the forest area so uh, these are the mcqs you go through it download the ppt on uploaded on the moodle go through it read it and try to attempt the questions so that's it for today's lecture thank you
wasteland reclamation loss of vegetation cover leads to loss of soil erosion which ultimately creates wasteland this is one of the pressing problems of the country loss of soil has already ruined a large amount of cultivable land in our country if it remains unchecked it will affect the remaining land we may eventually face a serious shortage of food grains vegetables fruit fodder and fuel wood hence conservation of soil protecting the existing cultivable land and reclaiming the already depleted wastelands figures prominently among the priority task of planning for the future what are the classifications of wasteland generally three classifications are there easily reclaimable reclaimable with some difficulty reclaimable with extreme difficulty easily reclaimable wasteland can be used for agricultural purposes those which can be reclaimed with some difficulty can be utilized for agroforestry wastelands that are reclaimed with extreme difficulty can be used for forestry or to recreate natural ecosystems methods of wasteland reclamation for different purpose for agriculture <clears throat> wasteland can be reclaimed for agriculture by reducing the salt content which can be done by leaching and flushing gypsum urea potash and compost are added before planting crops in such areas agroforestry this involves putting land to multiple uses its main purpose is to have trees and crops inter or under planted to form an integrated system of biological production within a certain area thus agroforestry implies integration of trees with agricultural crops or livestock management simultaneously third is forestry attempts to grow trees in highly non alkaline saline soils have been largely unsuccessful field experiments have shown that species like eucalyptus prosopis and acacia nilotica could not be grown in highly alkaline soil studies have shown that if tree seedlings are planted with a mixture of original soil gypsum and manure better growth can be achieved it is however important to use indigenous species of trees so that the problem recreates the local ecosystem with all its species need for wasteland development wasteland development provides a source of income for the rural people it ensures a constant supply of fuel fodder and timber for local use it makes the soil fertile by 
preventing soil erosion and conserving moisture. A program helps maintain an ecological balance in the area. The increasing forest cover helps in maintaining local climatic conditions. Regenerated vegetation cover helps in attracting birds which feed on pests in the surrounding fields and function as natural pest collectors. The trees help in holding back moisture and reduce surface runoff rates, thus helping in the control of soil erosion. Components of wasteland reclamation. The first major task is the identification of the problem at the micro level. The next step is to identify the factors that are responsible for the formation of wastelands. Based on these factors, the wasteland is classified into marginally, partially or severely deteriorated lands. Another essential component of the program is to organize publicity campaigns integrated with training of farmers and frontline government and forest department staff on the various aspects of wasteland utilization. Consumerism and waste product. Consumerism is related to the constant purchasing of new goods with little attention to their true need, durability, product origin, or the environmental consequences of their manufacture and disposal. Modern societies that are based on using large amount of goods, especially those that are manufactured for one-time use are extremely wasteful. Increasing consumption of natural resources has led to serious environmental problems worldwide. Current consumption patterns are depleting non-renewable resources, poisoning and degrading ecosystems, and altering natural processes on which life depends. India is rapidly moving into this unsustainable pattern of economic growth and development. The rich get richer often at the cost of the poor whose lives are not improved by the process of development. An estimated study says 200 billion cans, bottles and paper cups are thrown away each and every year in the developed world. Disposable items greatly increase this waste. Rather than compete on quality or reliability, many industrial consumer products are made for one-time use. Buying quality products that are warranted against failure or wearing out, learning about the raw materials that things are made of and an appreciation of their origin from nature's storehouse as well as 
knowing the conditions of the workers that make them are some ways of resisting consumerism and decreasing waste most human activities are related to production and consumption cycles which produces excessive amounts of waste in the form of solid liquid and gaseous waste products this attitude towards waste has led to disastrous effect on the environment besides over exploiting natural resources there is a principle of triple r that is reduce reuse recycle reduce reuse recycle or the three r's principle is the new concept in waste management but what does it actually mean although some waste is in vital in any society so we must minimize the generation of waste at the source by using minimum resources do not use what you do not need the goal of every society should be to reach a low waste or no waste society there are few suggestions for better waste management every country must survey all the different forms of waste generation along with its sources they must set up priorities concerning waste utilization most waste can be converted to resources which can enhance the economy of the country plans should be prepared for controlling waste at the source this must include segregation of wet and dry waste where the wet waste can be converted to compost and used and the dry waste is recycled so we must start thinking about 3 r principle that is reduce reuse and recycle we must use the things very wisely the things which are not of much use we should avoid it or reduce it we should try to purchase and use especially those materials which are reusable we must also try to use those products which are recyclable so this can be a major step towards managing waste less waste generation and it will be environment friendly activity waste generation survey should be done for each and every country to know what are the major source point and non point source of pollution in order to make appropriate plan appropriate strategies to minimize the pollution from entire 
country. Next is research and development programs to find innovative methods of waste recycling must be encouraged. Uneconomical methods of waste disposal like landfilling or incineration must be reduced to a minimum plans for appropriate disposal of non-utilizable hazards waste from chemical industries must be implemented and strictly monitored every community should organize extensive program on education and demonstration on the reduction of waste and the proper disposal and effective reutilization of waste material this should be included in the curriculum at school and college level also every society should make efforts to design people's lifestyle and cultural patterns based on low waste production the goal of every society should be to reach a low waste or no waste society